Welcome to episode 62 of the Unstoppable Podcast with special guest, Lazo Freeman. My name is Dan J. Gregory, and I am committed to hunting down the secrets of business mastery and human performance. My goal for the Unstoppable Podcast is to share insights from some of the most successful entrepreneurs, inspiring thought leaders, world-class athletes, and prominent celebrities to help you to become unstoppable in business and life. Each week, I'll be bringing you a new interview with an inspiring person and sharing my own results as I pursue the answers to the question, how can I create the ultimate edge in my business, make a significant impact, and live an extraordinary life? Hello, and welcome to episode 62 of the Unstoppable Podcast. Today, we make a shift from business and dive into what it takes to create ultimate physical and mental performance. But before we dive into the episode, let's recap what's been happening over the past week. Last Thursday, I brought you an incredible interview with James Lavers, an expert in the practical art and science of using video to build a leveraged online business. We had an incredibly powerful conversation about the philosophy of business freedom and discussed the advantages of building a boutique business versus building a big business. It's a really important episode if you're in business, so do check it out. Then on Monday, I recorded a really personal episode on money shame. There was a turning point in my previous career where my spending began to exceed my earnings and it created some negative money patterns that I'm still working on today. In Monday's episode, I got very personal and shared my own debt story and how I'm tackling the issue, not only of paying off the debt, but the issue of money shame and the money mindset that comes with it. You must check it out. In my business, over the last couple of weeks, I've been putting together a high-level business mastermind and laying down the foundation for my next major project. I've had a ton of people asking me, about how to start a podcast. So I've decided to produce a program where I'll share everything that I've learned about launching a successful podcast and getting your first guests and getting to your first 10,000 downloads. And more is coming on this soon. So let's bring it back to today in today's episode. Today's episode is all about body transformation and developing elite performance. I'm excited to introduce our guest today, Lazo Freeman. Lazo is recognized as the number one body transformation coach in the UK by the Association of Professional Coaches, Trainers, and Consultants. He is a champion natural bodybuilder and first got known for being the face of USN and training CEOs, business leaders, and the super rich of London. Now he's left all that behind to become the trainer to the trainers, helping them to move from personal training to the highly paid world of body transformation so that he can now change the world one body at a time through others. Before we kick into gear and start the show, I want to share how I originally came across Lazo and his work. I met Lazo Freeman at a key person of influence event hosted by Dan Priestley in London several years back. And as you'll discover today, we both share an intrinsic curiosity about every element of the human spirit. So after meeting up at the KPI event, the next time we actually met was an orgasmic meditation seminar, which was all about empathy, deeper connection, presence, and you got it, orgasms. Now that's a whole different story and uh, a whole different experience. But in this episode, bringing it back to today, Lazo shares his own story of body transformation and how far the journey has now taken him. And he explains the practical importance of the mind-body connection and treating your body with the utmost respect. We also dive into some of Lazo's key principles of body transformation and how to develop an elite performance mindset. Are you ready to take it up a notch? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Lazo Freeman. All right, Lazo, welcome to the Unstoppable Podcast. Excited to have you here. Second interview of the day. We're going to be on fire today. I'm ready to raise the game. Um, We're going to be talking about elite human performance, which I'm really excited to get into. But before we start, would you mind just sharing for the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do right now? Oh, well, first of all, Dan, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, I'm excited and it's an honor to be here. Um, what do I do and what am I about? I still ask that question every <laughs> single day before I go to bed. And so what's the point of it all? Um, so it's those old questions, those adjectives philosophers have. Why am I here? What do I do? And all that jazz, right? But what I do, what I do? Um, so I, I 
my our business creates psychological techniques so you can have sustainable eating and exercise habits what that means is that we get people to completely fall in love with working out because there's so much joy that you can actually achieve from understand how your body works so at the moment we're building a little army before we start to go into your average people like maybe yourself and in the past i used I was known for four or five years as the 10k coach and I, uh, all my clients were CEO entrepreneurs that did amazing things in the boardroom but ordering things in the bedroom. Mm, yeah. Mm. So what, what, what inspired you to start your own body journey? Where did that all begin? Oh, it could be a guy around the corner, Dan. Around the corner. So right where we're at Good Street right now in UCL, uh, University College in London, around the corner. I went there and I studied biochemical engineering. So pretty geeky, man. I know, I know my engineering. I know my, my chemistry and physics and maths. Um, that's what I was good at. However, as a student, you're kind of like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so I was like, this is where my life is going. So I wasn't really happy about where it was going. I mean, I love chemistry, but I just didn't see myself as an engineer. Mm. Um, I was running a bar. I was having a great time running a bar. My bar manager, lots of lock-in. Nice. You know, great for the gut, but I was getting overweight and uh, didn't know anything about nutrition. So it was like the pot noodle diet. Yep. Um, and also, you know, it just there was things that go in... I was you know, so issues with family uh, at the time with my parents they were going through like a messy divorce and all kind of stuff so I was just feeling really down and depressed at some point just slow you know it was a gradual thing like what do I do I'm 21 what the fuck do I do mm. um, I don't like this course so there's a lot of things I just didn't like Yeah. and I was really despondent and I was just really kind of like annoyed and I just realized I can't own any of it. Like, you can't own anything. The only thing you truly own, guys, is your body. Mm. I don't care how much money you have in your account. I don't care if you have a girlfriend or a wife. You don't own any of them. You only own yourself and your body. Everything else you can't control fully. But you can control how you feel. You can control your body. And just like the ancient Greeks believed that when you strengthen the body, you strengthen the mind. So I was like, that's what I got to do first. Okay. Fuck all the other stuff. I can't <laughs> handle it right now. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I just got to focus on. There's that one thing. And what, how I was inspired to take care of my body, I watched this video by Bill Phillips, a great entrepreneur. If any of you guys know, he ran EAS and a thing called Body for Life. Yeah, I read, like, book. I read yeah. the book, yeah. You know, and he sold his company for like 200 million or something ridiculous. Not too shabby. Yeah, not too shabby, right? <laughs> there is money in fitness. And so um, I was, and I watched this thing called uh, the Body of Works video and it mm. was like 10 competitors from like 1,000 people, 10,000 people from the States. And here's my British skeptic. Okay. <laughs> that's got to be steroids that's not 12 weeks that's bullshit so I'm watching this whole thing with all these voices and like and then there's, there's a couple of stories like that has to be true yes right and they look so happy wow and I was like right that's what I'm going to do and I was and it just happened there was a competition for a UK version um, which I entered wow and the funny thing is I just spent like straight after my exam it's the worst before photo you will ever see had the afro <laughs> Um, and I did the 12 weeks uh, thing and I just no actually three weeks beforehand I did all my research and this mm. is prior to the internet you know there, there was not that much information around maybe it was a good thing there's too much information now but back then I didn't have much information there was a few things I just stuck to and I did 12 weeks entered the competition and uh, a year after because it's a year competition we have to do it in 12 weeks timeline um, I ended up winning wow yeah. amazing and that's so, how I got into it wow so I have a question then. so obviously you found Bill Phillips so before that point then, had you already made the decision that you were going to make the change or did that help influence you to make the decision? That helped me massively influence it because it was like the Rob, Roger Bannister, like the four minute mile. I'm like, if this person could do it, mm. this re that person, that guy, like if he can do it. Sometimes, you know, I'm not really inspired by like the, the greats. It's the guy who, when you look at like, if he can do it, and he can be a, a successful entrepreneur, then he's more inspiring. I find that guy more inspiring than somebody who's just like amazing talent and a super genius and blah, blah, blah. If it's the other guy, there's one guy, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's just, he like makes an absolute fortune in YPO as a friend of mine. I'm like, if he's good in business, and fuck that, I'm going to get great in business. Like, it's that encouragement. So sometimes it's, it's not necessarily who's totally better than you. It's just a person... He just does it. Yes. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. And you, you know, you didn't follow the traditional path of just getting a trainer and going to the gym. You were like, right, I'm going to, I'm going to enter a competition and create, yeah. create, create transformation. Right, right. So what, insp what inspired you to do that and, and what drove you to, to create the result? What was, your, okay. what was really motivating you to make I that? guess my advantage that I just generally have is I have an engineer background. So everything I look at is like there's got to be, and what, what that means is there's the I and there's the we and there's the it and it's conditions. So I'm like, how do I set up the conditions 
the mental game. So I, I booked a holiday like just after the, the show, the sh- uh, the show two. So I, I was going to go on a plane. I was like, there's no way I'm getting on that plane without looking good. Nice. Like it was just there. Um, you know, and just set everything up and planned it and created all the conditions. And, you know, sometimes when you're really focused, I do really do believe this, and even in my entrepreneurialism in my business, when you're totally on point mm-hmm. and you have a nostalgia of the future and you bring it forward and you really believe it's already happened and you lived, you kind of live in that space, things kind of make its way to you. Opportunities come along its way. So um, midway through the transformation, the guy sort of just saw me training like a beast. And he was just like, <laughs> you know, you're pushing him. Not knowing what exactly I was doing, but he was yeah. just like, come here, let me show you some techniques. Nice. You know, so, and other people start to encourage. And you start to see that there's support will just form, you know, it will just, just create if you're really in tune, if you really believe in it. You know, there is that uh, additional source. I did have some support, but I think the initial thing, you have to have the crazy conviction um, and let the rest of the world catch up, you know, as long as you have it first. So did you have like a, did you feel like you had a point to prove at that point? What was what was the re, what was the real emotional driver behind that change? Um, a big emotional driver. I mean, I would say there's a couple of things. One of them is is like I just wanted to feel good about myself. How how I wasn't insecure. I was never insecure. I was good with girls. I was good with things like that. So it was almost like that issue. Um, did I want to have better quality girls? Yeah, for sure. I was <laughs> like you know, there's you better physique. You get more. I didn't have cash. So I was like, like that's that, that was a driving force. Um, but I just wanted to feel physically strong. I just that idea of feeling physically strong just appealed to me because everything else in my life felt so weak. Mm. So that was like the only thing I was like, let me let me own that. That's something I can keep. Create a pillar of strength. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So yeah. when you start that transformation, what what was some of the biggest challenge you faced on that initial transformation? The initial phase. So this is some. I mean, we we at the Body Count Transformation Academy we teach mindset, the application and science of mindset. So if you want change to happen, any sort of change, it's not an intellectual process. Mm-hmm. It's actually a visceral change. It's an experience. You have to have an emotional experience that's really heightened that wipes off any past memories of what you were, mm-hmm. so you can live in the future. Mm-hmm. So whatever that may be, you might have to go somewhere, anchor yourself somewhere, and fucking say what you have to say, feel what you have to say, and go into that space and do whatever it is you said. Obviously, set a plan before you do that, right? So you have that, so you can take some action straight off the bat. But you know, that's what I had, and that gave me the every time when I felt like I didn't want to train. Or this one time my ex-girlfriend came around um, from the States and just surprised visit me like midway from my transformation. <laughs> and, you know, we have guys, I always say, the girl that crushes it breaks your heart. That's your first uh, graduation in life yeah. as, as men. So, you know, that's, so she, was, she was like my graduation. Um, and so I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to go to the bar, locked in, had tequila all night. Like, wow. just smashed it with my friend. Just drank. And it was six o'clock in the morning and I was just like, I gotta do cardio now. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and did cardio, stinking of alcohol you know, and sweating it out. But I do realize one thing from that space is when you condition the body so much to fall in love with working out, that it will just take you there anyway, naturally. Mm. And that's what you, that's the key is doing, turn it into these successful habits and, and owning habits monthly, weekly, or whatever, quarterly. It's which habits are you ready to own? That's an important part. Cool. So I'm going to be sharing some pictures with Lazarus permission in the show notes so you can see some, so you can see this guy in action. You know, on the way up, up to the, the interview today, I had my girlfriend Lizzie, we drove here from mm-hmm. Bristol and I said, read me read me um, Lazo's bio a couple of times so I can just really internalize what the interview's gonna be about today. And, you know, she said, this guy's in some shape. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's some great pictures and I must show them so, so you can really get context. But so, so Lazo, after that initial transformation, you've gone on to do some amazing things with your body. What, what happened next? You know, what, when you completed that 12-week transformation, you got the award, what decision did you make at that point to... In well, terms of your future, I decided it's funny because my parents are Middle Eastern, so you're either a doctor or engineer or a pharmacist, otherwise, you're a fucking loser. So that's, that's the mentality that I grew up. That's the programming that I grew up. So when I said to mom and dad, like, I'm going to do personal training, they were like, Are you serious? Are you smoking crack? What's wrong with you? So I had to deal and contend with that. Um, but I just had this I had passion that I just wanted to transform everybody. I want them to feel how I felt because it mm-hmm. gave me so much. It was such a beautiful gift. So I was like, right, I'm going to do this single purse training. I'm going to try and transform everyone, which I failed because I didn't understand the human condition right. and how important mindset was. And so when I went and studied human from human behavioral specialists from all over the world, and you know, spent an absolute fortune to dissect it from a fitness perspective, is how do we engineer ourself because we are drugs Dan mm. like you and I are drugs like mm. you meet your girlfriend she makes you feel a certain way that's a drug induced state yes right so you know environment creates it so we can create our own 
internal chemistry if we know how if you can become the pharmacist of your mind so i got into the idea of how do you do that and you know how do you get these endorphin highs and wins and when when don't you get them um and it all you know did make you feel good when you feel good you have more energy you do good you're more productive you're just more active right do you, do you, things that you can just sh- you can wipe off your shoulder it's not such a big deal but when your energy's down and you get bad news it hurts a lot more mm-hmm. that's the thing right it's not about you going falling down and getting up it's falling down and how quickly you get up that's the key you know how quickly you can get up so um with these clients uh, uh, um and uh, all, all, well, most of them were like business people was they were really buying into the idea of um increasing their energy levels mm-hmm. because everyone has 24 hours a day because who, who wanted, who's your favorite entrepreneur? Oh, someone like Branson would be a, yeah. be, a, be a good guy. Good guy. And what, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's just energetic, right? You see yeah, him. There's, natural, a lot of, there's, yeah. there's a lot of energy there. Yeah. And I'm sure he works out and he takes care of everybody. He sure. doesn't need a six pack, but the energy part <laughs> is really important. Yes. So, um, so I just got fascinated. How do you increase your natural energy? How do you, what kind of supplement, what kind of food, what kind of mindset, what kind of rituals do you do before and after? There's a ritual, mm. there's a headspace that you go into. There is actually phases where you can actually go to an alpha trance state and you're in that space, which is actually very therapeutic for the body, so it recovers. So there's all these different things that you can do with your training, um, which involves the mind. And, and one thing, guys, the mind is not what's in your skull. This is where people mistake the mind. They think it's just gone, no, it's your brain. Mm. And then you have your body, and all you're doing is wiring the brain, conditioning the body to a new level of mind. The whole thing is the mind. So people don't think of mindset. It's actually your body set and your brain set, which is mindset. That's what it is. And you're changing that. And when you shift, and we know your reality is an extension of your mind. That's just the fact. That's the law. So when you shift your personality, you actually shift your personal reality. Something will have to change. You know? And I always say with all my clients, you don't just transform your body, you transform another area or two or three areas of your life, whether your business, your relationships, anything else, because your only home, guys, is your body. Absolutely. And you take it everywhere you go. Dan's in my office, but actually Dan's in his body. Yes. He's home in my office. That's Absolutely. where Dan is. And I can't make Dan feel happy or sad. It's Dan's choice to feel either way mm. so that's how important the body is I mean it's interesting that analogy of you know the body being your home because you know some people take such great care of their physical homes where they live yeah. or their or the car in the, their car uh-huh. you know this is a lovely office we're in it's all well, well taken care of but they don't necessarily take care of their body mm. why, why do you think that is? I think it's just bad programming in schools, families, you know, it's just as you've passed on to another, you know, the fitness industry has already been around for maybe 20, 30 years properly and it's still in its infancy. The education in it is still very limited in terms of what you can actually achieve and how do you actually enjoy your body. Um, and then there's insecurities, personal insecurities, how you look and not exactly accepting yourself for who you are. So there's all this stuff, there's a quagmire of the, the human condition um, of why people don't take care of their body. But if they can realize how much joy their body can give them because it's hormonal you know you, you, you have the right nutrition they showed that exercise nutrition is the strongest antidepressant and anti-anxiety there is like stronger than pros like seven times that's what it is so mm-hmm. like why wouldn't you want to do it but because they might have a bad experience in school when it comes to exercise maybe they just don't know how to breathe which i know that most people don't know how to fucking breathe when they work <laughs> out yep. so if i took dan guys as an experiment i put him under water and i held him there you know he's gonna panic and then he's going to get really uh, agitated and then he's going to go you know what? i'm never going to speak to Lazar ever again and <laughs> see him or if anything i'm going to sue the motherfucker for... so but that's what you're doing in the gym when people don't know how to breathe and they get, they're doing whatever exercise and they're beasting themselves and they run out and not breathing you got 70 trillion cells suffocating and they're like don't take me to this place called the gym or don't go out exercise or don't whatever it's giving you that message that's a wrong association. So, you know, for you guys listening who don't actually work out or don't know how to enjoy workout, I would just say practice your breathing. And then... Um, so just, what's the technique? What does that look like? Can you describe that for me? Okay. So I, I'll give you an experiment. There's, just two, there's two, two layers here. And I'm going to do it right here with Dan being here. So Dan, if you take a couple of deep breaths. And now. Yeah, again, number one. One more. Okay, see, I see Dan, like, he's lifting his right shoulder up when he's breathing, so he's not getting enough oxygen in his, his lungs. So you've got these beautiful called lungs, and if you open up your diaphragm, right, which is natural, if you watch a baby, when they breathe, their stomach goes up and down, mm. up and down. That's real inhalation. I've, everything else is, like, you're, you're short-changing fuel. O2, oxygen, is our number one fuel. You know, you could, so instead, you want your body to come out. 
So your shoulders are down, and then move. Okay, Dan, how do you feel right now? It feels great. If, it's, I mean, it's so just much more relaxing. So much more relaxing. <laughs> now try this now. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, right, and then breathe. All the way up and down. All the way up. And uh, okay. and now how you feel, Dan? Really nice. Yeah, so he feels nice. So if you're doing a workout and it can be intense and you're holding your breath and some people don't actually know how to breathe during the actual workout part. So when they mm. step or when they push or when they pull or whatever it is, they're not actually getting a rhythm. So I said build a rhythm with that. And then when you stop, um, so you want to create a win. So there's was, there was a study that showed two boxes fighting each other. And we know exercise and creates endorphins. Like that's the idea. That's the thought process. Is you know when you exercise, you produce endorphins. That's action incorrect. Your thoughts and exercise increase endorphins. And what you put your intention behind, and what meaning you give your thoughts. So these boxes, after they won one, so it's a draw. The judges decide one person win, the other one lost, and they measured their blood and they showed that there was the, uh, the, the, the lack of endorphin from the loser. So even though they exercised and it was close, so if you yes. ever watch you know, Conor McGregor and Neil Diaz, Neil Diaz didn't produce any endorphins. Got Conor it. did, even though they exercised probably even just as hard as each other. Yes. Right? But one didn't and the other didn't. And when you increase endorphins, it actually signals the body to produce testosterone, mm. the success drug. So we know entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs have high uh, testosterone levels. That's just if you, there's a study on that. I can't remember what's the study on it. So a very simple way to create win is put your hand up in here. And breathe. And it sounds, it might look stupid in the gym. I do it as my clients. I do it myself, right? You're actually telling the body a win. Blind people naturally do that pose. So guys, if you don't know what we're doing, we just put our hand yeah, in yeah. A triumphant pose. Yeah, imagine the Olympics. You see the Olympics. The yeah, yeah. Blind people who've never seen that actually ever happen. When they win, they put their hands up the same way. It's wow. a universal condition. thing. It's a condition. Yeah. So your body, the quickest way to change your psychology is through your physiology. Mm. It's mm. a lot easier. You know, movement and exercise and like can shift your psychology. You look at the Stoics, you know, what they used to do. They go used to go for walks and talk. Mm. And actually more impact than just sitting and talking. Of course. It takes it to another move level. Yeah. It moves the body. So, you know, anytime you feel stagnated, move. Get into your breath. Connect to that. And you will start to generate more energy upwards. Wow. Wow. So, I just want to draw on something. You said, um, you, you talked to, you know, about having that graduation moment with an ex, that ex-partner. I want to draw on that because I, I had my own moment at that point. Oh, yeah. What I want, happened? Uh, well, long story. I won't go into that here. <laughs> we want to know what that is. <laughs> I've probably already told it in, in, in the past. You left me an open loop. Uh, but either way, what happened as a result of that is I made a decision I was going to take control of my life to make sure. Because at, at that point, I felt rejected, right? Yeah, so, ego. Man. So ego, like, ego kicked my ass. Poor. But one of the decisions I made, I was going to be right, right. I'm, I'm going to create ultimate Dan. I'm going to create Dan 2.0. And one of the, one of the key things I was wanted to work on was my body. I was already training, but I wasn't taking it to, to, to any particular level. So I came with this concept of ultimate Dan. What would ultimate Dan be? Mm-hmm. So I'm really curious from from your expertise, your knowledge, everything that you know about the mind and the body. Mm-hmm. If you were if you were to take any kind of successful entrepreneur or business leader off the street or rip them out of the boardroom. If you were to design the ultimate version of someone, what, what would what would the components be? You know, so if you were to re, if you were to help reinvent someone physically, where would you start? What are the things that people need to think about? Oh, okay, so that's a great question. Um, so I was, I'm always fascinated by ideas like spontaneous remission when people have diseases, they cure themselves, and women who pick up cars and there's fucking the children's underneath and they pick up a car I'm like how, mm, the fuck? how does that happen like, yeah. it does happen yes. so I'm fascinated by that and that's called temperance and it's called the human spirit and you know when we are tapping into human potential which is the ultimate Dan mm. you're talking about the human spirit like mm. what is the human spirit and what is Dan's why I want to know what Dan's why is mm. you know, what is his ex- why for his existence if I know that then we can play the game Wow. Right. Then we can get down playing it on 10. Um, and what it starts with is what his values are. So I find out what your values are, not what you society says or whatever, it's what your true values that you demonstrate. And like, okay, that's his values, fine. Okay, that's who he appears to be. And then there's some void. We're all here trying to fulfill some fucking void, whatever it may be, which is cool. And uh, so we find out what the void is, because it drives the value. And then all I do now is link how 
exercise, nutrition, health, taking it to wherever it is the goal, whatever the goal looks like for ultimate down to, to coexist. Um, and I get you to the point of tears of appreciating that's, that's it. Mm. Right. So it has to be a visceral experience. Decision making has to be a visceral experience. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Then I get you to that space. Then all I do for the next whatever X period of time that's realistic to achieve that goal is uh, condition you to own it. So you're shifting your self image because I know you've got some self image of you maybe caught by your dad, your mom, your sister, your girlfriends, whatever. Who gives a fuck where it comes from? Yeah. It's my TV. Yeah. It's yeah. there, right? We yeah. just know it's there. Okay, let's just shift it so it's that ultimate down and really own it. Um, and I give you a story. There's a guy called Glenn Bridges. So he came to me. We did the same thing. And, you know, for him, it was the girl that he was seeing at the time and it was his business and there was some few other things I'm going to share here because it's private. And so we did all the work we just mentioned um, and he quadrupled his business. His relationship blossomed with his girl at the time because it's, it's all linked up. You know, you are your body. Mm. You take it everywhere you go. The energy yes. is a ripple effect, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so that was the ultimate uh, Glenn. I mean, he started up with four chin press-ups. That's what he could do. And when we finished, uh, he'd do 100 nonstop. Wow. Nonstop. Wow. Wow, yeah. some, some serious improvement. Yeah, everybody beats the pearls the best when they work with me. Everybody yeah. smashes it because we tap into the human spirit. That's what we do. That's, and that's how, you know, when I look back at my own change, I, that's what I did. So I was like, how do I, and that's when engineer comes in. How do I engineer it for every single person to be able to do the same thing? Wow, yeah. wow. So, so when you start working with someone that's really getting inside inside their head really inside their head and then in their soul we're going, we're going in <laughs> we're going in son you ain't coming out <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take you to the promised land but we're going in nice. but we don't, I don't start off that straight away but that's where we're, <laughs> that's where we're going break them down yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm interested to know then so you're obviously a very you know studied man you've, you've, you've studied some of the best minds across the world what, what have been some of the most important principles that you've learned from some of the some of the people you've studied, all the, all, all the philosophies, all the sciences, what, what, is, what are some of the most important principles that have made a tangible impact in your life? What's the most one? Um, Dimaggio said, we're not thinking machines that feel, we're feeling machines that think. So we're more feeling than thinking. And the analytical mind is great, but it's only good at moments of contemplation and reflection, and sometimes it just gets in the way. So you need to be able to, you need to, in life, as, a, as an entrepreneur or anybody, it's to know when to be objective and when to be subjective. Mm -hmm. So right now, me and Dan, I'm feeling that I'm being subjective right now. It's not, I don't need to be analytical. Mm -hmm. Maybe after this uh, podcast, I'm like, did I talk a whole lot of shit? Could I make that better? Blah, blah, blah. But that stuff usually gets in the way of things or taking action. Yeah. And that's like paralysis. So mm -hmm. I think that's a really important part to know is like, sometimes you've got to feel it. And then sometimes you just got to let it go and detach yourself from the feeling and like objectify it. Mm. And then um, I'm a big fan of winning the morning. That's just, that's just something I'm a big believer in. You got to take care of yourself first. You're number one, whatever it is. I've got my own routine and you can't go waking up and live someone else's life mm. or help someone else when you're not taking care of yourself first. Mm. And then at night, there's got to be some sort of place where you go introspective. It could be a minute or two, nothing crazy. Somewhere you just kind of like point a full stop for the day and you're not taking that nonsense into your sleep because sleep is great. Man, it's all the recovery. You need good sleep. Yes. Especially if you're an entrepreneur when you're getting roasted yes. every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to. I, want, I, will, I do want to talk about sleeping. I mean, I had an interest. You know, to just today, last night, for whatever reason, I, I, I missed my usual time. You know, I'm going to be very consistent. Mm -hmm. Same time every day. Wake up the same time every day. That's good. Consistent pattern. The body like rhythm. But last night it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So today, my workout this morning. You know, I train every single morning, six thirty in the morning. I suffered today. Mentally, I suffered. It's been a challenging day, and I've been running around doing all this kind of stuff. So just one night's sleep caused me caused me to suffer. Mm -hmm. what, what do people need to? What do people need to think about when it comes to sleep? You know, what's what's the most important principles? What what what? what That's great question. I mean, there's a few things you want to think about when it comes to sleep. First of all, uh, make sure your bedroom is your bedroom only for sex and sleep. Yeah. Right. Don't turn it into your office. Don't bring your fucking phone there. Don't do anything. It needs to be anchored that. Otherwise, you're going to get agitated. Right. Mm -hmm. It needs to be. That. And also, I know it sounds doofy, but just clean you men. We do it sometimes. Uh, clean sheets, you know, get them cleaned up. So it smells good. It feels good. It's, it's relaxing. You know, it needs to feel like an environment relaxing. Pitch black curtains. I'm fortunate. My genetics. I can sleep with this light on. Like that. Wow. I'm just. I'm just. I can sleep anywhere. Just. I've always been there like a kid. But for people who have uh, photosensitive sensitive eyes, 
like sleep is a big thing that's going to have issues with, with uh, falling asleep. A friend of mine named James uh, Swanick, he's an entrepreneur, he's created these glasses that does lots of Blu rays. Oh, wow. So at night you can wear them so you don't. Uh, for those people who struggle with sleep, they're mm. really good or they're on the computer late at night and they're typing away. That takes away the blue. The glasses look pretty cool. I, I, mean, I can recommend that. Then there's another layer to it, which uh, is important, is um, as long as you're, you're having good nutrition for a day, let's just say you, you have good nutrition and you still have problems sleeping, it means your brain is still in beta mm. instead, of, instead of alpha, then it goes to theta and it goes to delta. So, you know, ideally, you and I, when we sleep, we want to go delta. Delta means pitch black coma. Mm. That, in that space, you're releasing the most growth hormone, the most testosterone and everything else. And for you entrepreneurs out there, and the same thing, and my question there for the guys is, do you get a bone every morning? Mm. If you're not getting a bone every morning, if you're not pitching a tent every morning, <laughs> you need to sort your testosterone out. So zinc and magnesium also helps with deeper sleeps. And you know, everybody in the UK is magne- magnesium deficient. So you need it as a precursor to produce testosterone. Highly recommend uh, zinc and magnesium before you go to bed. Um, for those who still struggle, you can take some melatonin, but there's another layer which you can do. And it's a, it's a challenge, I challenge you guys, 21 days, get a pen and paper, and write 20 to 30 things that you can be grateful for, mm. right? Because gratitude opens up the heart, the heart switches the mind, tells the mind to go from sympathetic to parasympathetic, chill the fuck out, just relax, life is okay, there's a lot of things to be appreciated. When we're not appreciative, we're in fight or flight mode, Yes. right? That's where we are, sympathetic fight or flight mode. You can't go to sleep fight or flight mode, so there's no point. When you wake up, guys, then you can go into what am I fighting for? Yep. Perfect time to do it. Yep. But at night before going to bed, otherwise, you, if you're doing it all nighter, fine, that works. But if you want to go to sleep and you're lying in bed and you're just tossing and turning, it means you're in, you're in fight mode. Mm. Like, get off fight mode. That's what it is. Yep. Mm. What about duration in terms of time time sleeping? What do you think about that? Is there a... I, don't think, I think you got to find your own cycle. Yep. It's different. I don't think that everyone says this, that, and the other. You find your own cycle. I do six hours and I'm pretty good. Mm. But then I'll do a cat nap for like 20, 30 minutes of a day. You'll see me conk out somewhere yeah. at some point. I, def- I like my little cat naps. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. I read a study the other day on sleep that, that apparently now the skin is... For, well not now, the skin is photosensitive. Mm-hmm. So apparently now, if your skin is exposed and the the light in your room is bright, apparently even that will affect your sleep. Your, your, your body is receptive wow. to the light in the room. Wow. So that blew my mind. I was like, oh gosh, you know, there's me in my nice fancy sleep mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but next, next level, I have to wear pajamas. It's too damn hot yeah. for that right now. But just, again, just a simple thing of doing the gratitude. Yes. Pen, paper, write it out what you can be grateful for. Even some of the challenges, just be grateful, like how that's serving you. It's one of the best exercises because you actually create a wiring system to actually feel gratitude. Mm. So because I've done it so much, I can be on a plane, like right now, I would say if I was on a plane, give me five minutes, I'll lose a full seat, lose a full seat, I'll, I'll be out. Mm. Like I will conk out because I just wired that pathway that's available to you to go into that, that system. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm we, we are drugs. If we actually put the thoughts in there and we practice our thoughts over and over and over again, it becomes a new level of mind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are your views on things like mindfulness and meditation? Yeah, I meditate. Um, I, don't do any, I, I allow anywhere between 40 minutes to an hour and a half. I allow. The reason why I say I allow because I want to be nowhere, no time, no thing. Mm. If I give myself this time, that means I'm going to be... Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be in my head going, absolutely. is it over, is it whatever? So I'm not really... I'm still analytical. You've got to go past the analytical mind. So, I, yeah. I can relate to that. You know, I, I, I made meditation part of my daily practice for yeah. so long, but it, it was it was on my to-do list. So yeah. it, became, it became a mechanical thing. It was like, right, 10 minutes, Matt, it defeats the object. No, the whole object <laughs> is to get out and not be anything. <laughs> and come back and, wow, I actually feel better about myself right now. Absolutely. <laughs> so I did the same. I redesigned my morning routine so that I just had this flexibility so that I could actually allow allow it to be whatever it needed to be. Yes. And, 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 because yeah. I was just rushing and it's just defeating the object. So perhaps, could you walk us through your morning routine right now? So I wake up in the morning um, and I would do uh, one hour, as I say, I allow for an hour uh, meditation. Actually, I wake up first, I brush my teeth. It's a good idea. I always brush your teeth. Um, there's different things about the idea of drinking water because you slept and you got like this bad bacteria in there and you drink it in there. Some people say that's good for you. Some people say bad for you. I'm like, fuck that. That just sounds nasty. Right? <laughs> so I'm going to brush my teeth yeah. and, then, and then drink some uh, water with lemon 
um, a hot and cold mix. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's just it's just good for my digestion. I go on my roof, I've got a nice little roof. I go there, I'll meditate. If it's raining, I won't go there, but I'll still meditate. Um, and then I'll do this. You, and you can I can post this on YouTube for awesome. you for you if you want. It's a great system. So this thing called lymphatic system, which is part un- underneath your in your neck, uh, within your thyroid in your neck, under your armpits and like in your groin area. So when you're sick, you feel it. There, mm. and that's all there. It's called gunk and sewage. Right, that's what it is. Right, it creates banality and lethargy. Everyone will think, oh, you know, I don't feel good. No, you just need to move that sewage system. And there's no pump. So you got to remember. You and I, big back in our antiquity days, that were we were our ancestors. We talked about thousands of years ago. You know, we woke up. We had to move straight away. Yep. that's what we yep. did. We don't go straight into the tube or whatever. We <laughs> actually moved to get some water, and that's what we did. And there was a lot of fresh air, which helped move the limb system, so you don't feel groggy. So it's a really good routine. It feels like you're having five cappuccinos, nice. um, and it's all natural. And you know, it's, that's why I do that. So now I'm now energized the body. So I you know, fix my, my brain with the meditation, now energize my body. Then I, I study for an hour. Mm. I do an hour study on something, right? Um, I pick a topic for a month and I'll study that one thing, just so I like, so religiously. And then I'll go to the gym and I'll do my cardio or whatever it is I have to do. And so it's three hours like, for me. Yes. Nobody touches it. I mean, sick breakfast, like, like a king, <laughs> like a king, whatever it is. I go to a nice place, I'll eat. I, I'm a big believer is start your day like a gangster nice and then go in go in but most people what they do is they rush out cappuccino rah, 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 frantic I'm gearing up first gear second gear yep. third gear fifth gear so now I'm on point and I'm ready to rock ready to rock so yeah I, I prefer that nice nice so okay so just deconstructing if, say if I was deconstructing you we've got the mindfulness we've got the gratitude uh-huh. we've got the morning routine what, are, what other components enable you to achieve elite performance yeah so a, a big believer again so when I do the, the cardio that I do in the morning I'm actually going through what it is I'm going to do today so I'm actually channeling the day mm. I'm seeing and visualizing my day during the workout that's why I'm, I work out for that people think I work out for my body I couldn't give a fuck man <laughs> how I look how I feel is more important to me yeah. so far more important is that feeling so I go for that and I'm channeling it and I'm saying what the six or seven or eight or nine priority things that must happen today. Mm. I need to get that done today, you know, mm. realistically. So that's really, that's, that's how I win, win the morning. And that kind of, you, you would think most of the time and sometimes it doesn't. But even if you don't, if you do have a bad day, you're like, I had a pretty sick morning. Yeah. <laughs> what <Whatever> happens? <laughs> like, you know, my morning, you know, you get you break up with your girlfriend. Like, I start a sick morning. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, I don't care. It started pretty good. It started good, right? It doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what about then physical transformation in terms of conditioning the body? I say, yeah, so I usually like to work out maybe uh, before the gym gets busy, 4.30 or maybe 8 o'clock. I'd, so it depends. It depends on my obligations that I have to. But I prefer, that's when I really kind of go beast mode and mm-hmm. train and lift and do resistance training. You know, I've, I've competed as a bodybuilder. I won shows in Miami, the UK, a few, few shows. Um, and I understand how that works. I still love that type of training. It's just something I enjoy. I also do ring ch- training, body movement. I'm pretty flexible, mobility. So I've got standards. So these are good standards to have. You have your relative flexibility, your relative mobility, your relative uh, body strength. So you know, what chin ups, press ups, and uh, anything body weight. So it's got really good. Awesome. So you, you build it up. So you have markers and then absolute strength and power strength. So they're different things I, I kind of see as a whole for me personally. Um, you know, I'm 36 years old. I can't do heroics anymore like I did when I was younger. <laughs> you know, these elbows, I got to take care of them. Um, but yeah, I still love my training. So uh, I'm sure you, you're familiar with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, he seems to be the flavor of everyone's month at the moment. Uh-huh. But, you know, he talks about entrepreneurship in the sense that he doesn't believe, you know, the discussion of are entrepreneurs born or created? Mm-hmm. He doesn't believe that entrepreneurs are not everyone can become an entrepreneur. He yeah. doesn't believe that everyone can do that. But when it comes to physical performance, can everyone create this phenomenal change? So in terms of some of the physiques you've created in your body, yeah, does, does everyone mean, have the capability to do that? I'm not going to say everyone can get a six pack, but shit, man, like this one guy, Mads, like I probably saved another 20 years on his life. Wow. You know, so, uh, and I've had people who hate working out and just love junk food just because that's what they buy and made a massive radical transformation. So I do believe you can, 
but I don't I, I don't want to say you're going to look like an Arnold or you're going to look like that you, you have to make it realistic to some parameters of your genetics you can supersede your genetics I do believe it but okay. there is the limit to how far you know I'm, I'm not going to be do you know I'm fast as sprinter but I'm never going to be as fast as Usain Bale there's just, just, the, just the law there so it's finding something where it is like achievable but it's just outside of your comfort zone um, totally can totally mm. can um, but for people to feel good everyone can feel good because you are drugs yes. your body is drugs that's what you do it's biochemistry my, 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 uh, when I was doing biochemical engineering the first thing the lecturer wrote is life is biochemistry on the wall nice and I was Profound. like yeah and I was like <laughs> what do you mean by that right? it just can't be so mechanical right? and there is that and there's also there's, you know, the, the, the energy side to it that creates the chemistry what's actually happening within the cells that like even biochemists don't understand how does that happen and why are these atoms doing what they're doing mm. they just are so there is something behind that too yeah I mean, it, it. I mean yeah I mean that's something I'm opening some doors here so just earlier in the week I was talking about thought you know I, for some reason I woke up first thing in the morning I thought where does thought come from and that how fast is thought is it faster than the speed of light because Geez, like sometimes I think of somebody about in Australia and I'm like, oh, there's the, there's the phone call before it actually happens. It's the person, right? It's, so it's pretty fast. It's crazy. But the, the distinction I made, and I'd be really interested in your thoughts on this, is that, you know, the thoughts are just happening. They're just landing. They're, they're happening over and over again. And, you know, I couldn't find any, any signs to explain where the thoughts come from. But we have obviously the subconscious mind, which is active all the time, running all these processes. But then we have the conscious mind mm -hmm. that we're in control of. And we can direct our conscious thoughts, which then influences our subconscious mind. So what, what do you... Yes and no. Okay, so I mean, this is what I'm interested so to get into. You psychology know? talks about, it's roughly about 5% conscious and 95% unconscious. Mm -hmm. And there's a doorway called the subconscious. That's mm -hmm. the doorway to have that communication. So trying to change that 95% with 5%, it's like David with a Goliath and they, David doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> That's what it is at. But you're right, the parts where you can speak to the subconscious that goes into conscious, all these programs that you don't even know you have, you think you have your own beliefs, but they're beliefs passed down by mm. God knows who. Mm. And your belief makes behaviors, that's what it is. So if you can change those beliefs, I will question Gary Vaynerchuk, maybe they can be uh, created. I think they can. If you can actually shift those beliefs. I agree. It's just that he had very strong beliefs at a very young age, so he gets that blah, blah, blah. That's the thing. What about if we went to someone and actually shifted all that other junk that's there and cultivated uh, all the good stuff that Gary has, let's mm. just say, to be an entrepreneur? I do believe that can happen. Yes, true. Um, but it's just, there probably is a science there. You might figure it out on how to do that. And, you know, that's your thing. But I definitely think that's the case because it's the same with the body. It's shifting people to fall in love with the body. It's being able to communicate from the conscious to the subconscious into the unconscious, which is the body, and then creating a new pan, a new paradigm from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after I think that emotional shift, you know, the reason I opened that up is because um, you know, like that process of creating that mental change for people. You know, Often people who are overweight, I think, is down to people being have a lack of self-love in some cases. Mm -hmm. how, if, you know, if that, that doorway is so slim and it's so challenging to overcome those past conditionings, what, what is the real key to success when it comes to creating that change? So, I mean, we have to break down. Like, overweight people, I'm not going to say everybody, but the majority of overweight people is a protection mechanism of why they're overweight. So we need to find out what benefits. They get in some sort of subdiction to being overweight. It's protecting them from something. It might be someone broke it. They broke up with somebody or whatever. There's something there that they put in there. So we need to find that to create an alternative before you go in there. That's usually there. And it's part of it's going to be self-love. You know, a quick way to discover that if you do is look in the mirror and say, thank you, I love you. And can you look at yourself in the mirror and do that? I know it sounds fucking woo-woo, but if you can't do that, then don't expect to go to the gym and train. Enjoy the process if you can't look at yourself and say that. Like, so then we know where we're at with that, with this, you know, mm -hmm. where, what's going on um, in terms of how you see yourself. So yeah, compassion is an important part for it, but also, you know, sometimes you can be a bit ruthless with yourself and say, look, stop being a, a dumbass here. You know, take care of your body, love yourself. Yes. You know, so it's, it's the, the two, two arms. It's the fatherly, ruthless love and it's sometimes your mother's compassionate love and you need both. Mm -hmm. So we get that both in that right dosage. That's where the change happens. Awesome. So what's the vision now for your business? Obviously, you've, you've created this amazing physical transformation for yourself and you know, countless others and you've built this entire body transformation academy. What's, what's your vision for, for the future for you personally? Uh, my vision is to be undeniable. Wow. That's the vision. 
Um, and what does that mean to you? So, you know, like, first of all, I've done lots of transformation for people. And now we train the trainers so they can do it. We've got like a thousand body transformations on our books mm. from not me doing it, from my trainers doing right. it on their own. And it's not they doing a Lazar Freeman system. They're, they're basically integrating all the stuff that I'm teaching with them that's specific to their market. And we're looking to, to transform over a million people by 2020. Awesome. That's the thing. And using the data that we get from the trainers. And the trainers are like my little army that we're building up um, to do so before we launch to the average guy so they can do it on their own because there are some people who have self-reliance and they can do it without a trainer. Mm, mm. So what's, the, what's, what's driving you? you what's driving that? I, I, you know what? What makes me happy is contribution, dude. I mean, I've, I've, I've experienced all the wealth there is with my clients and I'm with some of my best friends and it doesn't make me that happy. It doesn't drive me. Like, cash is great. I want to give me, cash is great for making dreams happen. That's, that's why I see it. Like, you know, I love money to make more dreams happen. Yes. But, you know, personal material acquisition doesn't really light me up and more of the stuff doesn't like me up. This lights me up. Like, wow. So, yeah. What, what makes Lazo happy though? What makes you most happy? You know, just, it's, see, it's like, it's, it's, I always say it's science and art. I'm fast. I love science and art. So when I see someone go through my process and then it's a very unique individual. So Dan, working with Dan or working with someone else, there's an art to it. There's mm. something else. There's this deeper connection that we have to go through, right? And, and, and produce. And, I just know that when I die, right, and I'm, I'm a big fan of death, like death is your ultimate companion, the hunter, it's with you all the time. If you just realize that, that you just, you become more alive when you know it's always mm. with you. Mm. So I was the one and I was like, how many captured moments can I create on this lifetime? Wow. I don't need the same ones. I just need different ones. Yes. That's just all what I, I, I like. And then who's going to be there? Um, so who's in, in an egotistical way? It's like, you pass away, how did you make them feel? Are you just forgotten or it's like, fuck man, oh, yeah, Lazar was a fun guy, or well, Lazar was this, or what Lazar, you know, that, that contribution, like what would that look like? So, yes. yeah. And what's the answer to that? So, you know, you meet someone, what's the, what's the one word to describe how you'd want to leave them feeling after they spent time with you? I don't know. Freedom, I want to, I want to feel freedom. Mm. Feel free, you know, because the shackles of your emotions and your body and, you know, aging and all this stuff that we have to deal with. Like we all, you know, we all deal by, you know, like, fuck, I got the freedom to just rise above and transcend whatever it is I had to rise above. So to me, that's what I'm fascinated and hopefully other people feel the same way. Awesome. And what does freedom mean to you? Freedom. It's just, what it means to me is, I guess, overcoming, just overcoming, right? Mm. Changing the rules of the game. You know, that's what it is really changing the rules of the game and just living a life to the beat of your own drum whatever that is um, and enjoying the fuck out of it <laughs> yes yeah enjoy the time those are here it is yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so I've, before we finish up um, it's a, I've got a question here so it's a classic question but you know is there a question that I haven't asked you you know if there's one if, there, if there's something I've missed you know we've talked about some really um, really strong topics that people can use to, to transform mm -hmm. their experience. Yeah. Is there, is there a question that I've missed or something you just pops up in your head thinking, oh, I should have talked about that. What would that be? If, what, what have I not asked you when it comes to the human experience in terms of a physical experience or a mental, emotional, energetic experience? Uh, so interesting. So for me, the precursor to freedom is discipline. So there has to be some sort of discipline, whatever that looks like, to be able to get freedom. Mm -hmm. just, it's just, just the law. And so whatever dreams you have, you don't rise by the level of your dreams. You fall to the level of your training. Mm -hmm. So set the game up. It's your life. You know, pick something you're going to master to the best of your ability for to be good enough. I'm not saying mastery for two weeks to what, uh, 12 weeks or six months, however you want to play it. But just pick those hours and just show up. Yes. just keep showing up and just do it and do it and do it and you know what you're going to be richer for it and you're going to start creating patterns whatever those patterns are that's going to make you valuable and make you feel good and listen to your fucking inclinations and just do that so but skill the fuck up too nice yeah. nice so I've got three questions to, to end the show for you today so here's a question I, I asked this for the first time today I'm going to ask it to you as well mm -hmm. so you can think of no, I used to ask what, be, what would be the advice that you would give your younger self mm -hmm. and that's Almost the most overused question. Right, you right. can answer that in a minute if you want to, but I've got another question for you. So imagine your younger self, whatever age you can think about, that's up to you, mm -hmm. looking at who you are now. What would they say to you? What would the younger self say to you <laughs> as, as you are now? 
like, go on, son. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yes. That's what he would say. He'd be like, fuck, yeah. That's what you're on it. Yeah, I think so. I think I think it'd be happy. He's like, fuck, I don't have to worry so much now. <laughs> nice, nice. nice. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So you say about worrying. So let's let's flip it the other way. What would you what 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 would you say to your younger self if you were able to speak to your? I would just say, man, don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask as many questions as you have to, and just keep asking questions. It's never about the answers; it's about just asking questions because the answer will come at some point. Mm. Even if you don't know the answer today, you just keep asking that question, mm. and it will come. And the right person, or the right thing, or the right book, or the right video, or the right podcast, like here, yes. right, will come. And um, that's that's probably the best advice: questions. Awesome. If you actually look at the word questions, right? You got quest, and you have ion. Mm. The word ion, and in, in chemistry, ion means charge. So it's the quest to find the other ion. Nice. To be able to make that reaction. Nice. That's what we're on. We're on a quest, guys. Nice. That's a great answer. I like that. So you've already said you're a big reader. You read an hour a day. And that, for me, answered one of my questions. Right now, I've been studying, you know, who, who reads, how much do they read, how important is it? So reading's obviously important to you. And normally, mm-hmm. again, normally I'll ask what's the most impactful book you've ever read. But what book are you reading right now? And what have you learned so far from what you've read? Okay, so what am I reading right now? Um, I'm rereading Treaties by Swami G. I can't remember pronounce the long name, and it's a study of Vedanta. Uh, Vedanta is uh, the Bhagavad Gita slash the Upanishads. Is this old philosophy, and so it's more rather than just let me just devour the book. It's more like just read and really contemplate the idea. So mm-hmm. I might spend two hours, so an hour on two pages. Wow! Just literally, just wow. just on that. So I'm I, I'm shifting from uh, information acquisition yes. to more depth. I like that. So I'm just spending more. That's what I'm in that phase in my life right now. So and anything interesting, like I just have to read. I probably just skim two mm-hmm. pages or mm-hmm. take just you have an inter- you have a feel like this is all I need and, and put uh, and put it somewhere else but that's that's a good one because it talks about certain things that helps to strengthen your intellect mm-hmm. and the intellect is not about likes or dislikes or how you feel or how you don't feel there's something higher but above that so if you can strengthen that by just contemplation introspection and all these kind of things you know and uh, people that I'm fascinated by um, like um, Churchill or Gandhi or all these individuals they, they, were, they were very introspective very contemplative very very contemplative so that's a skill set I realised we talk about skilling up that I want to acquire to help my business nice and that leads to what, another question uh, is there someone you emulate do you try is there someone that you'd like to emulate in, in terms of your business in terms of my business, you know what I, I do currently like Aubrey Marcus on, on it I think he's doing a great thing where he's uh, uh, mixing a few ideas together which is I'm kind of doing um, I don't really have a specific person I, I, I really don't and I think I mean there's always going to be influences yes. you meet people they're going to have a little pinch of something here yep. and there but um, who's been the greatest influence so far on your journey what in terms of in terms of the books in terms, in, of, in terms of business or you know who, who's, who's, who's really had a profound impact on you I said my team yes well. yeah this is my team it's just you know the arguments the pushing <laughs> the lifting this this you know rising each other's standards you know take that stuff that you learn a lot from just being in the thick of it awesome yeah yeah awesome my last question for you then Lazo is what does it mean to you to be unstoppable what's, what's the meaning of unstoppable to Lazo Freeman simple just raised in love just raise it with love whatever it is just like you know what I'm going to fucking raise it with some more love what are you going to do about it I'm going to put some more love up there what are you going to do that's it that's for me I love unstoppable. That. lots of love amazing so the final thing people need to know obviously there's lots of doors we've opened today in terms of our, our ideology and philosophies of our body mindset for people who want to find out more about your work Lazo, what's the best way for people to find out about what you're doing and how to connect with you so at bodytransformationacademy.com is probably the best one um I mean, add me on Facebook, there's Instagram, that's a Freeman, all that jazz, you know, or just to email me if you have any specific questions. Um, that's it, really. Awesome. Lazo, thank you so much for unleashing your greatness on the Unstoppable podcast today. You are unstoppable. This has been a fantastic episode. I've gone away. You know, if I just go away and breathe like that, I'm <laughs> going to have to shoot a video so you guys can see what we're doing. Um, but thank you so much for your time today. It's been an amazing episode uh, and much respect for what you're doing. All right, folks. I am inspired to take my physical performance to the next level, and I hope that you are too. 
In fact, I've been working extremely hard on my physical performance over the last few months. In fact, I've been working with Luke Graham, one of Lazo's Body Transformation Academy graduates, who's one of London's premium personal trainers working out of Raw in the city. Um, a fantastic trainer. So uh, you'll actually be hearing from him on the podcast in the near future as well. Um, and today you heard me get my breathing right. I'll put the video on the show notes shortly. So head over to danjgregory.com forward slash 62 to check that out. Now, if you're a personal trainer or know of a personal trainer and you are based in the United Kingdom, then check out Lazo's free summit on the 8th and 9th of October in London. You can get free tickets over at bodytransformationacademy.com forward slash summit. I'm likely to be there with my partner, Lizzie, who's also a personal trainer, so it'll be a good place to connect. And at the beginning of the show, I mentioned that I'm about to create a group program on how to launch your own podcast. It's going to be called Rock Your Podcast. If you could be interested in taking part, then head over to danjgregory.com forward slash rock your podcast and leave your details there to let me know you're interested. And finally, before we sign off for today, I recorded the first ever episode of the Daily DG daily live Facebook show yesterday. So please do come and take a look and like my Dan J. Gregory page on Facebook. Click to receive live notifications to tune into the show. It's coming to you live every single day at 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. Come and tune in. All the info and links mentioned in today's show will be in the show notes at danjgregory.com. So head there to, to get all the links. And that's it. We are done for today. I'll be back on Monday as usual with another solo round. So until next time, Go out there, unleash your greatness, build your empire, make your impact and live your ultimate life. You are unstoppable.